So I guess we start with uh, people that have never known or used Ruby. How many here? Well, it's a good head count. How many do not know anything about Ruby? Okay. Can you come here? <laughs> okay. okay, now you have a very nice Vista desktop, as you can see. Sure. And your task is to install Ubuntu. We just downloaded it for you, so you have the icon. That's, we let you guess the rest. <laughs> Let's double click in this. <laughs> so just, just install it. Pretend you're a normal user. I have to put the password. I'm not looking over the password. <laughs> I'll take care from here, one second, because yes. Well, that's it, I guess. So, at least from the user side. Mm -hmm. yeah, we Thank you. <laughs> okay, starts to boot, so we'll sync the, the video. Yeah. So, basically, we had a little trick in that uh, we pre downloaded an ISO file. So to spare you the trouble, otherwise the, the installer, the wizard will uh, get on and uh, download the ISO. It will run MD5 checks, uh, signature checks, etc. And uh, then basically we'll just reboot. So that's the, all there is uh, on the Windows side. Um, what happens is that uh, the installer creates uh, a, a file, in fact a folder inside of uh, the Windows file system. And the folder contains uh, the ISO, which a precede, and some uh, disk images, which are just files inside the, the folder. And then basically we we'll use this, uh, the loop module in, uh, in the kernel to mount those uh, virtual disks as uh, real disks. And uh, you use precede uh, and automatic ubiquity and pass all the options which were gathered by the, the wizard interface. So the little wizard also does some uh, detection. So of course we know what the, the key map is. We know what uh, the locale is the user is using in Windows. And so we don't need to ask all those questions. We just uh, gather that information for the user, which makes basically the installation process even speedier. Uh, now basically we are in ubiquity. Uh, it's all in automatic mode because uh, the, the Windows side has created a proceed file which contains all the questions Ubiquiti will normally ask. So Ubiquiti doesn't really need to ask any question. And what it does is, in fact, install it inside the file in Windows. Um, it will take a little bit of time because, of course, it has to copy all the files. So this is a, a standard Ubuntu installation. Uh, I want to stress that the installation, in fact, is almost identical to the installation. If you do a diff between uh, a VUB installation and a real installation, you will find the only two files which are different are FSTAB and uh, Menudo list. So it is in fact uh, very close. And uh, we will have later on migration tools that will allow you to get uh, a VUB installation and uh, then port it to a real partition. So that uh, it will be another click away for the user to upgrade to a real dedicated partition, so if they want, they can remove Windows later, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is not a virtual machine. The only thing which is virtualized is the disk via the loop, but you have full uh, uh, hardware resources access, so you will see that uh, the 3D acceleration works, for instance. Uh, CPU, memory, all that is like a real native installation. Um, it is not that much lower in normal circumstances. So unless the partition, the Windows partition is very fragmented, and unless you have, uh, you're running tasks which are input-output uh, intensive, such as video editing, um, you wouldn't notice as a user any real difference in performance. 
So a user normally, unless it, they, they run some benchmarking tools, whatever, which hammer the, the disk input output, will then really not uh, notice any difference. Um, the other issue is swap. Swap is uh, use another virtual disk. So it's basically exactly like having a swap on file in uh, Linux. Uh, you can do that without Vubi if you want to. So instead of doing a swap partition, you set up a swap on a file. Of course, that means you cannot hibernate because the kernel doesn't support uh, hibernation of uh, a file. Yes. Uh, well, it works less quickly. The way it works now is this. Uh, whenever Vubi is run off a CD, um, we pre-select the desktop. We don't allow people to change the desktop because, you know, some might be confusing. But not if you do in standalone mode, so you download the Vubi XR, then you run it, then you can choose Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Kubuntu KDE 4, and uh, Xubuntu. And uh, basically, we can uh, add any distribution which uh, supports a live CD. Yes. So but we're running two modes. Basically, if it finds uh, this is a CD, we'll use the CD. Otherwise, it will look for an ISO in uh, common directories. Uh, if it doesn't find the ISO, it will uh, download the ISO for you. And it does have uh, it does mirror selection MD5 check it checks the signature on the MD5 and then it does MD5 checks on the ISO so it should be fairly safe. And what other what do the other derivatives need to do if they want to get included in that list? Uh, it's very easy. You see, there is basically a configuration file for Vubi, and we just need to add an entry in that configuration file. On top of that, on the mirror on the server side, we need to create a meta link file which is basically a file which describes where to download the, 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 the ISO from and uh, what is the MD5 of the ISO. So provided we have that on the server and we change this file within Vubi, it's, uh, then we have to recompile and it's ready. And of course you might want to add some uh, artwork for the distributions. couple of things people normally get confused. They think that Vubi requires uh, Windows. It's not really true. I mean, of course, the front end will require Windows to run. Uh, once installed, we only require the Windows file system. So you can delete C Windows, and it will still boot into Ubuntu if you want. So um, second, it's not a VM. So people confuse it with Colinux. Now that we have this uh, Colinux uh, uh, we've end Linux uh, uh, and uh, such, so it's not exactly the same thing. This is uh, it works. Uh, the plan from the beginning was to work exactly like a real installation. And yes, uh, unfortunately you cannot see because I cannot sync the video when it's booting, but I, I will show you when it's up. Basically, it, it doesn't replace the bootloader. It uses group for DOS. So group for DOS works like a program. And we add an entry to the Windows bootloader, which can be anti-loader, BCD, whatever, which then chains load into group for loader. And then group for loader loads the kernel, which then does the rest of the job. So next thing will be to do this migration tool, which basically will be probably incorporated into Ubiquity. So the idea is people can try Ubuntu via Vubi. Uh, if they like, we'll have this. Uh, they, they will download uh, Ubiquity. Uh, I will need you again, I guess. <laughs> so, congratulations, yes. Here we go. So as you can see, we have a 3D acceleration. You can see the shadows, the effects, so it's a full thing. Uh, as you can see, the first entry, that's basically root is mounted on host Ubuntu disks, root disk. So we are booting off a file. And the file is inside host. Host is, in fact, the Windows partition. So you can see that. 